free. Today I am doing my March book haul, which is bigger than I was expecting because Barnes & Noble had their 50% off sale. Book, the book haul sale is what it's called. That's right. Uh, where a bunch of books are 50% off. I was actually really happy with this sale because it wasn't just YA and children's books. I mean, I did buy YA and children's books. But they had some nonfiction books, they had some mysteries, some fantasy books. They actually had a really good selection this time around, so I bought more than I was expecting, but that's okay. I am now on a book buying ban, except for me. We'll see. Alright, so the first book I got, I actually pre ordered on Amazon, wasn't part of the sale was Priori of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I'm very, very excited that I have this book. So the Barnes & Noble near me always like cheats release days and has them super early. So I almost bought this like two days, three days before it was supposed to come out, end of February. But every single copy in the store, I don't know if this is just my store. The covers were like ripped right here, fallen off. The dust jackets were all messed up. Like they were rough condition and they didn't have any others so I decided to pre-order on Amazon, got it the release day, so technically got it in February, but I didn't include it in my last hauls, I'm including it here. But what do you know, the back cover on mine is ripped right on the seam. So if you've had quality issues with these books, let me know. Or was it just me? I had weird luck finding all the broken ones. But yes, I uh, really am excited for this book. It's a world divided, a queendom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakens. So this is a dragon book, uh, pretty high, it's high fantasy, 100% high fantasy. I've already read a hundred and some odd pages of it. It is going to be epic fantasy, kind of along lines of classic fantasy stories. And you're following multiple perspectives in two different kingdoms, it's east versus west. They have different uh, religions, they're fighting different views on the dragons. One says all dragons are evil, the other says no, real dragons are fine. It's these... What are they even called? Wervens? Is it Wervens that are evil? I don't remember. I'm reading three books right now. It's, it's... don't read that many books at once. It confuses you. But it is beautiful. I like it. It's interesting. There's oh, no romance so far and I'm over 100 pages in. But I've heard that there is romance coming up, apparently. This book is beautiful without its dust jacket. Ignore all the fingerprints. I read it without the uh, dust jacket on it. Spine is super pretty. I like it and the paper is thick. So normally like newer fantasies have that really thin almost bible page paper. I hate it. It's really hard to turn pages. They stick together. This has nice thick paper. Feels hefty when you're turning the pages. I'm enjoying this book though for the content as well. It's super easy to fall into if you are a fantasy fan. If not, I can see it taking a minute because there's a bunch of different worlds that you're following, different characters, trying to figure out who's who. Some names are kind of similar. They're not too similar though. Um, it's kind of adventure, kind of politics, plotting. Uh, I don't like the queen at all. I think she's not pleasant. I just don't much like her. But I like all the other characters, so I, I have high hopes. So that was my first acquisition of March. And then on to all the books I got with the Barnes & Noble 50% off book haul sale. I will start with the ones I intended. Whoa. Hello. I will start with the ones that I intended to buy when I actually went into the store. So that would be the first one. I'm so excited when I saw this on the sale because I asked for it for Christmas and I didn't get it because I don't think the store had it and it was expensive. Which is When Women Ruled the World by Kara Cooney. I, if you don't know, I was obsessed with Egypt when I was younger. I wanted to be an Egyptologist. I studied constantly pyramids in ancient Egypt. Ah, it was just amazing. Um, Kara Cooney is actually a UCLA professor of Egyptology. She's pretty well known. She's written some other books. I've heard mixed reviews on this one, but I I, I love Egypt. I love Egyptian history. Um, so I was really excited that I saw this one. And it's the queens, which I don't know as much about as the male pharaohs. I know far more about them than the women. I'm super excited. Let's see if it gives table contents. So like, it does cover Cleopatra and Nefertiti, which are the ones that people have heard more of. <laughs> which, it calls Cleopatra the drama queen and Nefertiti more than just a pretty face. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce the others because they're not as commonly spoken of. Okay, I'm going to give you the names because I can't pronounce them 100% unless I Google it really quick, which I don't have my phone anywhere near me, so that's not going to work. Uh, so it gives the actual name and then like a title. Like I said, Cleopatra is the drama queen. Nefertiti is more than just a pretty face. The first one is Queen of Blood, The Last Woman Standing, Queen of Public Relations, and The Survivor. And then there's an epilogue, Why Women Should Rule the World. Um, if you're into feminism, you probably like this one. I'm super excited because it's Egypt. <laughs> I'm super excited. This was part of the sale. And then the other one that I got, I've been debating getting it because part of me thinks it sounds really boring and the other part thinks it sounds amazing. So that is Once Upon a River. And this is Three Girls Missing, One is Returned, A Story Begins. So it kind of sounds like a folklore retelling sort of vibe to it. So basically people are telling tales on a dark night in an inn along the River Thames and a girl dies and comes back to life and, but she's mute so they have to try and figure out what happened and two other girls are dead as well or missing. I don't really know. I've heard really good reviews about this one. I know a lot of people were excited. I did not realize this was the author of The Thirteenth Tale which I've also heard really good things about. I'm excited. It's a really pretty cover and it has that kind of waxy texture to it which is always my favorite. Uh, once it was 50% off though I had, I had to get it. So that's one of the other ones. And then the last one I actually intended to buy, you won't be surprised if you watch my January wrap up, and that is The Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow, which is book two to Nevermore. This is a middle grade fantasy series following a girl who, she goes to kind of like a magic school, kind of, it's hard to explain, but she is originally a cursed child and she comes to find out that she actually has some magical type abilities, sort of, and gets taken in by this hotel owner. It's sort of Harry Potter-ish, but not really at all. If people say it's like Harry Potter, it's not. It's fun, it's cute, it's adorable, it makes you laugh. I cried a few times during the first one. This, actually, she's done with the trials to be into the magic school. Is it a school or is it an organization? I think it's both. I think it's a school where they do training and then they're part of members of an organization for life. But I'm excited because it's the Wondrous Society. It's only been two months and I've already forgotten that. So I'm excited to see what Morgan is up to and of course the giant cat Finn, I think is her name. I want to see where Finn is. I loved Finn. So that is the last one I intended to buy. There are two more though. Oof, grab both of them. I'll just grab this one. So this one I already read. I actually read it the day I bought it. Watching You by Lisa Jewell. So last year I read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, which follows a woman finding out what happened to her teenage daughter who went missing years ago, and there's a new little girl and a creepy tale, and you figure it's just creepy. Um, this one follows a group of people living in this town that are all watching each other, and there is a murder, and you're kind of going back and forth trying to figure out, you don't know who died. They're interviewing a bunch of the different characters that they suspect, trying to figure out who, and you're not sure what's going on because you don't know who's dead. So there's a boy that watches everybody out of his window. He has um, Asperger's, which is kind of a spoiler. But yeah, so he has Asperger's, and there's a daughter who's trying to help her mentally ill mother, who I believe they said was schizophrenic, or they thought she might be. And then there's a girl, she's late 20s, who is obsessed with the boys that lives next door's dad, who is married, she's married also. That whole part just was gross. But everybody's kind of obsessed with somebody else in the story and they're all watching each other and through this watching each other you start to piece together why somebody might be killed, though you just don't know who till the very very end and then you find out who. I didn't see the who was the killer coming at all. I didn't expect that one. I liked it. It's not scary. It's not like the best mystery ever, but if you want to read something in like a single sitting or over a weekend, going on a plane ride, this one's great. I really liked it. It was unexpected. A little weird, but cool. Alrighty. And then the last one, this book. I honestly had no idea if I was going to read it. 
I had a love-hate relationship with book one. This is a sequel. It is The Wicked King by Holly Black. Okay, first off, The Cruel Prince, I hated it. I listened to it on audiobook, it made me mad, I was annoyed, I didn't like any of the characters until the very end. And then I was just, I had to know what happened, I was reading obsessively for like the last, I want to say 50 pages, because it was an audiobook, so I don't know how many pages, but I, I was upset, and then it ended, and I'm like, no, I'm not ready for it to be over, and I thought about it, and I'm like, no, I really hated the book, I'm not going to read The Wicked King. Then I saw The Wicked King, and then I was curious, I hate Cardin, hate him so much, I don't much like Jude either, I'm shocked I actually remember their names. But there's something about this world that, like, you hate it, but you need to know what's happening. So I think this one picks up right where the last one left off, which is basically... I'll give you a synopsis of the first one, and so I don't spoil. Because if I give this synopsis, you'll be spoiled. If you don't know what it's about, which most people probably do by now. The first book follows Jude. She lives with her twin sister and her older sister and her parents. Parents are murdered by older sister's biological father, who turns out is a f fairy? Fae? Are they called fairy or fae? I'm just gonna go with fae. Who was actually a fae? And then, um, because their mother was still technically his wife, uh, he took in all three girls. So they were raised by the man that murdered their parents in a very cruel, like, messed up, not fairy tale fae world. And then she's struggling to be accepted, but in a different way. Her twin just wants to marry a rich fella and move on in life. She wants to be a warrior. Basically. And then their full fae sister doesn't want anything to do with the world. That's basically where it is. It's cruel. It's messed up. It's twisted. Um, at points you hate everyone. Absolutely everyone in the book. But then it builds up to this thing at the end and you're just like, oh... Maybe I do like this book? Yeah, that's my struggle. So I picked up the second one. It's short. I am going to work my way through it. Weirdly enough, I have not read a single YA book this year, which is abnormal for me. Alrighty, these are the... Oh yeah, I got two other books. Oops. So you will probably have seen this or you will see this. I got my book of the month books, which is Daisy Jones and the Six and Before She Knew Him. This follows uh, Daisy Jones, who is part of a 60s or 70s rock band, and it's all interview style. And kind of like, what happened? Why did the band fall apart? This is by Taylor Jenkins Reads, who wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I loved her writing style, and I thought she had great, like, storytelling, plot, all that great. I loved it. Hated the characters of the other one, so I'm hoping to have better luck with this one. And then I got Before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson. Never read anything by him, it just sounded interesting. We are following a woman named Henrietta and her husband. They live outside of Boston. She is finally um, medicated properly for her bipolar disorder, and they, she's settling into her career type thing, and then this new couple moves in next door, or they're new. I don't know who's new. Whatever. Um, so the couple next door, she recognizes something about the husband, and then she begins to think he's a killer. So, that's where the thriller aspect of this one comes in. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be any good, but it sounded interesting, and I've already read one thriller this month, so watching you. Figured why not add another one. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books that I bought this month. Oh, they're heavy. Oh lord, Priori made them heavy. They're heavy. I think every single one's a hardcover. I'm holding this with one hand. I'm impressed. I've been sick for a week, so my upper body strength is not up there right now. So these are the eight books I picked up. Most of them are pretty new. I'm gonna drop these, so I'm gonna go ahead and say bye. Happy reading. I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.